There's no reason acidic or basic species need to be neutral. In fact, many of the most common and important acids or bases have positive or negative charge. For example, the ammonium cation is an important acid. In practice, this is a great source of protons due to its positive charge. And the majority, I'd say, of the most important bases have negative charge. So, for example, the hydroxide anion, OH-, that's a very important base. The acetate anion, which is the conjugate base of acetic acid, is another practically important base with negative charge. Phosphate, another base with negative charge. In this video, we'll see how salts in their reactions with water can display acidic or basic behavior. And this ultimately could just comes down to an ion acting as an acid or base. All of the logic we've applied to neutral acids and bases so far can be applied to ionic acids or bases just as well. So we could assign, for example, a Ka value to NH4 plus and think about its acid ionization reaction with water. Acid dissociation is perhaps more appropriate here since we're already starting with an ion. But we can think about its reaction with water, the proton transfer reaction. We can think about the proton transfer reaction and Kb for the acetate anion in water, and so on and so forth. So we'll elaborate some of that theory here and see how salts can act as acids and bases, developing some terminology and ways of thinking about salts in particular. Salts are a little bit tricky to work with because every cation or anion must come with what's called a counterion. So for example, NH4 plus has got to come along with an ion like Cl minus to balance its charge. Would, would typically ignore that counter ion, but it will be there, for example, in problems and where you see ammonium chloride thrown in solution. And so we kind of need to know how to deal with it. Likewise, for anions, we're going to have counter cations that are basically inert, but that we'll still see in chemical formulas. For example, we might see OH minus together with Li plus and lithium hydroxide and we kind of need to keep in mind how we deal with the counter ion, which is more or less to ignore it, but there's a strategy for ignoring it, right? The ability to recognize it and keep it out of our mind is something we want to pay attention to when dealing with salts. So salt solutions contain cations and anions, and those can donate protons to or accept protons from the solvent. And in aqueous solution, the solvent is water. So we have the capacity of an ion to, for example, donate a proton, that's acidic behavior, or accept a proton from water, and that's basic behavior. Two examples are shown on this slide. NH4 plus can react with water to give NH3. Notice that NH3 is the conjugate base of the acid NH4 plus, so this is a classic Bronsted proton transfer reaction with two conjugate pairs, and hydronium is formed as well. This shows the capacity of NH4 plus to behave as an acid. An example of an anion acting as a base is shown below. So chloride anion, at least in theory, can react with water to accept a proton and form its conjugate acid, HCl, as well as the conjugate base of water, OH-. Now, the second reaction is much, much less favorable than the first and occurs to a negligible degree for reasons related to the conjugate seesaw that we'll touch on in a second. But for the time being, let's entertain the notion of these two reactions and recognize that how a given salt behaves when we take, for example, ammonium chloride and dissolve it in water depends on the relative values of Ka and Kb for the ions within the salt. So for example, here we can assign a Ka value to the reaction of NH4 plus with water, and we can assign a Kb value to the reaction of chloride with water, since it's a Kb here because chloride is acting as a base now. What we find if we make measurements on a variety of ammonium salts and a variety of chloride salts is that Ka for the ammonium cation is much, much, much larger than Kb for the chloride anion. And so we can essentially ignore the basic reactivity of the chloride anion here since it reacts with water to a negligible degree as evidenced by its extremely, extremely small Kb value for this second reaction right here. Ka for NH4 plus is much larger, and the NH4 plus ion then 
it undergoes an important reaction with water when ammonium salts are dissolved in water. This is the thing that's doing the business. This is what's driving the acidic or basic behavior of this salt. And in fact, here we would conclude that this is an acidic salt because the major, the dominant reaction with the greater K value involves the cation acting as an acid. And you'll hear me refer to the ion that reacts with water in a dominant sense, the active ion. This is the ion that's actually doing the business, the active or reactive ion when ammonium chloride is dissolved in water. In looking at salts, there are some general guidelines we can use to sort of heuristically find that active ion without going and looking up Ka and Kb values. And one that's very important is to recognize the conjugates of strong acids or bases. These are ions that we can typically ignore. So we've got, for example, the list of strong acids. HCl, HBr, HI, HNO3, H2SO4, etc. The conjugate bases of these acids are so negligibly weak as bases that we can ignore their reactions with water. They don't react with water to any appreciable degree. So we've already seen, for example, that chloride is on this list, but also bromide and nitrate are two other examples, and there are others based on the list of strong acids. Now, what about the conjugates of strong bases? This is a bit more of a thinker. What's the conjugate acid of a base like O N A O H? We know that's a strong base. Its conjugate acid would involve adding a proton to NaOH. That proton would become attached to the oxygen atom. And so in adding a proton, we would end up with H2O or HOH and the sodium cation. So we can think of the sodium cation, the hydrated sodium cation, surrounded by water molecules in solution, as the conjugate acid of NaOH. And this is a very important general idea to keep in mind. The conjugate acids of strong bases are those metal, of, of strong bases that are hydroxide salts, are those metal cations that come along for the ride with the hydroxide anions. So these are things like Na+, Li+, Mg2+, etc. These cations undergo no appreciable reaction with water to produce hydronium ions, and so effectively we can ignore them. It's the other ion along for the ride with these very, very stable cations that's going to be the active ion. Do note, however, that metal cations can function as acids, and we'll see that in a couple of slides. Metal cations, when dissolved in solution, have coordinated water molecules, and those water molecules can surrender protons, meaning the metal cation can act as an acid. And a famous example of this that we'll see is Fe3+. In aqueous solution, the iron-3 cation is actually coordinated to multiple water molecules. Six is typical, and this can surrender a proton to create, uh, for example, H3O+, plus. actually, just to make sure this is balanced, I'm just going to write this as H+, plus. and an iron hydroxide with still the remaining five waters coordinated, now with a charge of, of 2+, plus, rather than 3+. plus. We'll see how that works in more detail in a couple of slides. Now, if we put the two categories of anions and cations from the first bullet point together, we end up with neutral salts that, in fact, don't react with water at all. And these are many salts that you're probably familiar with from everyday life, things like NaCl. The cation is the conjugate acid of a strong base, NaOH, and the anion is a conjugate base of a strong acid, HCl. And so this is a completely inert, completely neutral salt. Neither the cation nor the anion reacts with water to an appreciable degree. And solutions of NaCl in water at 25 degrees Celsius have a pH of 7, neutral pH. In the box here at the bottom, we have an example of a basic salt solution, sodium acetate. In the first reaction here, we're considering dissociation of sodium acetate when it's dissolved in water. So we take solid sodium acetate, it's an ionic compound, it's a solid, throw it in water, it dissolves. The resulting species we get are Na+, that's the cation, and the acetate anion, CH3, CO2 minus is one way to write that. So we can think about, for example, acid behavior of the Na plus cation and base behavior of the acetate anion. And 
weigh the relative Ka for Na plus and Kb for the acetate anion, but not by looking up K values, by thinking qualitatively. Na plus is the conjugate acid of a strong base, NaOH. We can ignore it, right? This is not going to react with water in any appreciable degree. The important reaction when this salt is dissolved in water is the base dissociation reaction of acetate with water to produce acetic acid and hydroxide. And so this will happen to some degree. We'll end up with the conjugate base of water, OH minus, and the solution will have a pH that is greater than seven as a result of the generation of hydroxide and the concomitant decrease in the hydronium ion concentration that accompanies that generation of hydroxide.